In this video, we will show you why you need a jitter attenuator or jitter cleaner for synchronous Ethernet syncing over other synchronous serial applications like Sonnet. Synchronization does exist in the Ethernet on each hub between two adjacent nodes, but the synchronous clock is not passed from hub to hub. For example, the output data from each network equipment is time using its local crystal oscillator. Since the frequency among those local crystal oscillators may have a plus minus 100 ppm frequency offset, we may treat topology as a traditional asynchronous Ethernet due to the frequency offset. Also, we must use the elastic buffer over 5 volts to accommodate up to plus minus 100 ppm frequency drift between those local quest oscillators. The 5 volts should help the data transfer between two similar but asynchronous clock domains without big errors. Lastly, both TX and RXPL filter the input jitter from the reference clock, so jitter was only added by the channel, either from the bandwidth limit ISI or destroyed reflection or cross talk. And the jitter would never propagate more than one hub. Looks like the asynchronous Ethernet should be OK. Do you have any disadvantage images of the asynchronous Ethernet? Correct. The asynchronous Ethernet will rely on sending timing information in packet layers over a physical layer. Therefore, it will be influenced by impairments introduced by the higher levels of the networking technology, such as packet loss, packet delay variation, etc. On the other hand, think about the benefit images of the synchronization Ethernet for 5 seconds. Yes, on the other hand, the synchronous Ethernet can derive the physical layer transmitting clock from a high quality frequency reference by replacing the crystal with the frequency source traceable to a primary reference clock. This will not affect or depend on the operation of any Ethernet layers to be transparent well. The receiver acts on the far end of the link would lock to the physical layer clock of the receiver signal and then not only acquire a highly accurate but also a stable frequency reference, which is similar to the traditional hierarchical master staff network synchronization. The axe could lock the transmission clock of its other pole to the frequency reference and we can fully establish a time-synchronous network. The synchronous Ethernet also allows operators to integrate the existing synchronization systems, such as SOLNET SDH system timing capability, and future deployments into conventional industrial standard synchronization networks. Lastly, the Thinkit provides an accurate reference frequency to mobile base station, which may not lead to a low cost but a reliable connection in network. So think about the clocking images of the thinking for five seconds. Good. Passing clock synchronization is relatively easy. Just take the recovery clock from the receiving node in synchronization with this clock and then fit it to other nodes, which are also transmitting synchronization. In short, only one clock frequency in a time domain is propagated through the entire network to provide high quality service through synchronization. But the single clock source in frequency is propagated through multiple hubs, so the jitter editor by each channel can 
accumulated across multiple hubs, obviously. For example, the data output from each network equipment or hub is returned using the recovery clock, which is very jittery and has no jitter filtering at all. Since the XPL or clock data recovery CDR was supposed to track the input phase or jitter, then maybe a question for you. How can we reduce the accumulated jitter? Think about the PL's low-pass filter images for 5 seconds. Bingo! To reduce the accumulated jitter, we could just add a low bandwidth PL after the recovery clock to filter out the high-frequency jitter from the recovery clock. Remember the transfer function between the PL's output and its input reference clock is a low-pass response. Therefore, connecting the recovery clock of the RxPL output to any low-pass filter over PL input reference would reduce or filter out some of the high-frequency jitters. But is that enough? Of course not. The PL bandwidth would be still limited due to its intrinsic high phase noise of the VCO. Therefore, we may need an enhanced jitter attenuator. Think about the extremely low bandwidth image of a low pass filter for 5 seconds. Great. To clean up the accumulated jitter further, we should add a call jitter attenuator after the recovery clock to clean the retiming clock up before retiming data in the channel. As we know, the recovery clock could be very jittery, and the low bandwidth PO may not have an optimized low bandwidth to fill out the extra jitter effectively. What we can do is to apply the dual loop PO in cascade as a jitter attenuator or a jitter cleaner shown here. The recovery clock of the XPL will connect to the outer loop and the control voltage to control the frequency control wall FSW of the functional feedback divider in a very narrow loop bandwidth from 1 mHz to 1 kHz on the outer hand. A high quality reference clock will connect to the inner loop in a higher loop bandwidth from 1 kHz to a few hundred kHz. Is this good enough? Yes, the jitter after the jitter clean up should be low enough. But if you'd like to pursue a much more high quality car source with extremely low jitter, you can think about the high quality reference source image for 5 seconds. Correct. You can apply the microelectronics mechanical system, MEMS oscillator, to generate highly stable reference frequency used to sequence electronic systems, manage data transfer, define radio frequency, etc. As you can see, the temperature compensated crystal oscillator's high frequency noise is higher than the MEMS oscillator. Then, it will serve as the input reference of the first PL's outer narrow bandwidth loop, 1 kHz. But the MEMS oscillator will serve as the input reference of the first PL's inner wide bandwidth loop, 500 kHz, such that the noise flow of the high offset frequency is little. The second PL's inner and outer loop stays the same as before. For example, the input reference of the second PL still comes from the recovery clock of the ISPL or CDR. Here are the summarized images of why we need the jitter attenuator or jitter cleaner for synchronous Ethernet SYNCGIT or other synchronous serial application like SONET. Again, the traditional asynchronous Ethernet employs the physical layer transmitter clock to be derived from a low-cost 
plus minus 100 ppm crystal oscillator. And the receiver lock onto the frequency offset. Then there's the no need for long-term frequency stability because the data is packetized and can be buffered through the FIFO or elastic buffers. For the same reason, there's no need for consistency between the frequency of different links. In addition, both TX and RXPO filter the input jitter from the reference clock. So jitter was only added by the channel, either from the bandwidth limit ISI or distorted reflection or cross stock. And the jitter would never propagate over one hub. But the asynchronous Ethernet would rely on sending timing information in pack layers over a physical layer. Therefore, it will be influenced by impairments introduced by the higher level of networking technology, such as packet loss, packet delay variation, etc. On the other hand, the syncing would not affect or depend on the operation of any Ethernet layers to be transparent well. The eyes on the far end of the link would lock to the physical layer clock of the receiver signal, and then not only gain a high accurate, but also a stable frequency reference. The synchronization Ethernet also allows operators to integrate existing synchronization system and future deployments into conventional industrial standard synchronization networks. Lastly, the SYNGIT provides an accurate reference frequency to mobile base station, which may provide a low cost and also a reliable connection in networks. But the single clock source in frequency is propagated through multiple hubs and can jitter accumulate across multiple hubs. For example, the retime clock using the recovery clock, which is very jittery and also has no jitter filtering at all. Since the RXPO or clock data recovery was supposed to track the input phase over jitter. The simplest way to reduce the accumulated jitter is to add a low bandwidth PO after the recovery clock owing to its low pass response. But the PO bandwidth would be still limited because of intrinsic high phase noise of the VCO and still have some residual jitter. Therefore, we should add a jitter attenuator, which is a dual loop PO in cascade, arranged as follows. The recovery clock of the RX PO will connect to the input of the outer loop and the control visual feedback divider in a very narrow loop bandwidth from 1 mHz to 1 kHz. On the other loop, a high quality reference clock will connect to the inner loop in a higher loop bandwidth from 1 kHz to a few hundred kHz. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from low circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and please share comments down below. Lastly, Please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting.